Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for attending, and thank you very much for, um, for partners for sponsoring this conference and supporting this research and supporting my, um, my other ventures as well. Um, the key uh, problem that I would like to address is the um, accurate prediction of risk for major depression and anxiety disorders. These are among the most prevalent psychiatric disorders. They are the first and fifth leading causes of disability worldwide. They affect hundreds of millions of people across the world, and they create great disability and suffering. Um, they also have a developmental time course. If you look at the graph, you see that the um, the prevalence of major depression at 12 years of age is about 4%, and by age 17, it rockets up to 18%. It remains high for a few years and then begins to drift down. And our goal is to really be able to identify these individuals who are at great risk for being um, depressed so that we can then uh, intervene and potentially uh, prevent their depression. Now, considerable effort is being developed um, to um, polygenic risk scores for schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, which are less prevalent, uh, very serious disorders. The disorders that we're focusing on are far less heritable, uh, and early exposure to adversity plays a critical role uh, in their emergence. Um, and our basic feeling is that psychiatry lags behind other areas of medicine in that we don't have a general preventive strategy where individuals at risk can be identified um, through screening or testing and efforts made to reduce their risk because prevention is often so much more effective than treatment. Um, we've discovered that there are sensitive periods when exposure to specific types of abuse or maltreatment are the most important predictors of risk. We've developed an instrument called the Maltreatment and Abuse Chronology of Exposure Scale for assessing type and timing of exposure to maltreatment. Um, it looks at the severity of exposure to 10 types of maltreatment, including peer emotional and peer physical bullying across each year of childhood. Test has excellent test retest reliability. This is an example of eight of the 10 types of maltreatment um, that we identify, uh, blue or males, um, red or females. And it looks like a retrospective report across the 18 years of childhood, severity across each year. You can see that some of the um, types of maltreatment, like uh, physical neglect, um, are pretty consistent uh, across um, childhood. You can see that for sexual abuse, the next graph, um, that males and females have a comparable prevalence until about seven years of age, then it becomes much more frequent in females. Um, you can also see that some types of exposure um, peak early, like physical abuse uh, from parents peaks at about five or six. Physical abuse from peers peaks at about 12 or 13. You can see gender differences in some of these types of maltreatment. And you can get a good sense for what individuals experience. You can also look at this in terms of who develop psychopathology, who didn't develop psychopathology. You can see individuals who develop major depression, that they've had much more exposure to parental nonverbal emotional abuse, which includes things like parents being very difficult to please, parents having no time or interest in talking to you. You also see they had more exposure to emotional neglect. They have more exposure to peer emotional bullying. Uh, and the question is, can we identify the key factors that produce risk, and then can we turn the model around and have it, in a predictive analytic way, identify individuals at high risk. The problem in doing this is collinearity. Um, degree of exposure to a particular type of maltreatment like nonverbal emotional abuse at age 12 is highly correlated with degree of exposure at age 13, and collinearity causes a real problem with conventional statistical analyses. Um, we've done Monte Carlo simulations looking at virtually all AI models that we could find uh, to see which were actually capable of dealing with a highly collinear data set. Um, we found that random forest regression with conditional inference trees was remarkably good at identifying sensitive period um, predictors in uh, simulated data where we knew the exposure type and we simulated an outcome that would predict, say, 5% of the variance. Um, General linear models would be very confounded, having a hard time separating signal from noise, whereas this approach was very beautiful in finding those particular sensitive periods. We've applied these techniques. We've identified sensitive periods for exposure that are the big predictors of risk for major depression. In this case, the most important predictor in males is exposure to parental nonverbal emotional abuse at age 14. Um, but also emotional neglect earlier. The biggest predictor uh, in females is peer verbal abuse at age 14, but there's also importance of emotional neglect and nonverbal emotional abuse. And then the question is, can we go back, can we go back even before age 14 and predict risk? Can we actually go back um, 
far enough to be able to get that, that giant growth curve. So this is a proof of concept study. We had two data sets. We had two retrospective data sets, an online sample of about 2,000, an interviewed sample of 667. We looked at different analytical models. And our goal was to really identify, um, starting at age 12, who was at high risk for developing depression. And in addition to this, this MACE data up to age 12, we included maternal and paternal history of depression and anxiety, as well as gender, parental education, and family finances. And the model worked well. Um, we could establish an upper 20% uh, of these individuals and they had a 50% chance of developing clinically significant symptoms of anxiety and depression, uh, and a lower group that had about a 13% chance. Um, so being able to identify individuals with 50% risk of developing a serious disorder like this is impressive and can serve as a basis for developing preventive and testing preventive strategies. We can look at the onset of depression in the group. In gold, you see the individuals at low risk, and you see a gradual um, appreciation of cases. Uh, in the high risk sample, you see this rapid um, emergence of depressed cases between 12 and 15 years of age. Uh, and we can identify this, this group potentially based on our retrospective data. Um, the, we can take it a step further. We can get a 50% um, assessment based on um, just this clinical information, just this uh, type and timing of exposure to adversity. Uh, using neuroimaging, we can take it to the next step, and we can identify those maltreated individuals who are susceptible to developing depression and those comparably maltreated individuals who are resilient um, with about 80% predictive accuracy based on neuroimaging. So we can do first step by clinical screen, second step by neuroimaging if you need to go to the extra uh, degree of accuracy. And so this study provides initial proof of concept based on retrospective data that it's possible to use AI predictive analytics to identify use at an early age with ultra high risk for developing depression or anxiety disorders. Um, these findings will need to be verified um, in a longitudinal study. Doing so would set the stage for developing psychological or somatic treatments to prevent emergence of depression and anxiety in high risk. So the vision is really to be able to have an individual come in um, in pediatric practice to be able to do a screening instrument and to identify those individuals who are at uh, particularly high risk for developing depressive and anxiety disorders and then to um, be able to implement treatment that would really um, significantly attenuate the risk. Uh, we need to confirm this in a longitudinal study, but if this is true, if you can identify individuals who have a 50% or greater risk, um, then you don't really need large-scale studies um, to show um, efficacy of a potent intervention. Um, so we hope to be able to take psychiatry uh, to a new level by able to make it uh, much more effective uh, at prevention. Um, I'll be outside the room and happy to discuss this and similar studies with anybody who might be interested. Thank you very much.